What's up, Browns fans? Welcome to the Dogs Podcast. Let's kick this thing off. Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Zach Kopp, Justin Charles, and Josh All. Hey, what's up, everyone? Thanks for checking out another episode of the Dogs Podcast. Uh, before we get started, I want to remind you to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and please subscribe on YouTube. Uh, no game for the Browns last week, so we, uh, we don't have to bash the defense today. So that's refreshing. Um, we will anyway, though. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Uh, we do have some injury updates, some positive injury updates, which is uh, very nice. Uh, we'll dive into, and then we're going to do a Texans preview. Kind of give you guys a little outlook on what we think uh, the rest of the season looks like for the Browns. Maybe how we think the AFC is going to shake down, uh, do some game picks, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, so some of these injuries, uh, you know, Nick Chubb and Wyatt Teller. I said praise Jesus, Nick Chubb and Wyatt Teller coming back because that is huge. Uh, I know, like, when Nick Chubb went out, we thought uh, we won't really miss a beat because we got Kareem Hunt. I think we really miss Nick Chubb. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, and on Wyatt, the the Wyatt Teller note, I mean, he was proving why he was why we needed him when he was in there, but without him in there, has really proven why we need Wyatt Teller. Right. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Uh, thought kind of the same thing. You know, I thought we weren't gonna offense was just gonna be able to roll transition in because we were already using Hunt, uh, but definitely miss Nick Chubb, miss Teller. Uh, also, get Hooper supposed to be back. Um, from his surgery he had a couple of weeks ago. So bye week kind of came at the perfect time, you know, it gave us a time to get some healthy guys back because uh, we really got to, you know, not run the table, win them all, but we got to, you know, win the games we need to win here in the second half if we want to turn this into a playoff team. Yeah, right now the Browns sitting at eighth, which is kind of crazy yeah. to think that, you know, at five and three, we're, we're not in the playoffs right now. We're only in the hunt. You know, the last time the Browns went ten and six, they didn't make the playoffs. Oh yeah, and a ten so and six Colts. and a ten and six team won the Super Bowl. Yep. The Giants, yep. I still remember it like it was yesterday. So the Browns, I see there's five must wins on the Browns' schedule second half of the season. Uh, it starts this week with the Texans. Yeah, yep. And um, I don't think uh, Nick Chubb's for sure a complete lock yet. Like everything I was reading, he looked explosive. He looked great. And then, you know, I, yeah, coach I, said today, "Hey, we'll see." Friday, whether we're going to activate him or not. Well, he's still if, on IR. How if much he's of, not, if he's not ready, and it's like kind, of, I don't want to force him back, right? Because I don't want to. I'd hate to force him back, put him out there. He tweaks something. Now he's gone for the next three or four weeks, and all will re- reevaluate. Because three or four weeks go by, it might. I mean, we might not want to bring him back, right? You know, because some of these teams we're going to play against. You know, we're going to get into it on who we, um, who we have left. There's some games, obviously, we have circled that. We should win, but we're still the Cleveland Browns. Those are—I mean, we've won sure. those games so far this year. But you know, I'm not writing every—I'm not you know circling W's already uh, for the rest of the year. Well, there's we're, definitely one I got to circle, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I want, well, but, wait, there might be two for you. Yeah. Your favorite state? There's kind of three. <laughs> <laughs> so there's actually—I there, noticed a trend um, in the Browns' second half of the uh, uh, schedule. We play some bad teams. But they have good quarterbacks. Yes. And what's the worst part of this Browns team? It's our defense. Yep. And so, you, you know, these wins, you know, the Texans, the Eagles, the Jaguars, uh, Giants, and Jets, I think those should be five wins for the Browns that we'll get into. But Houston's got a good quarterback. Philly's yeah. got a good quarterback. You know, I what? guess the New York's maybe not great, but I don't know. I like, I I like Danny Dimes, the but yeah, the Jets, I would say no. Joe Flacco was letting it rip the other oh night. My God. Joe Flacco looked good, and I loved all the reports that came out. And so they got the ball back, and he ended up throwing that pick. And all these reports saying, you know, somebody radioed into Joe Flacco in the huddle and said, hey, you're throwing this post. I don't care if they're covered or not. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. You're throwing that ball. Yep. And it, got, it was double covered. He had two guys in the flats wide open. He didn't even look at them. He had it like it was made up. I'm throwing this ball there no matter what, yep. and it got picked. For Trevor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, because that's that's exactly what it was. Yeah. It was like, hey, Joe, you did great, but you might earn this yourself isn't a what we're trying spot. to do. I thought Coach, uh, to Coach Bill was going to try to make a play for, you know, he's like, we got to play these guys two more times. 
these are two wins we can give them. Right. You know, let's get this thing. Let's try to make right. this thing a little bit more. Well, I mean, he, he rolled Cam Newton out there. He did the yeah. best he could oh. to try to oh lose. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, kind of, you know, like Blake said, playing some good quarterbacks. We said we weren't going to bash on their defense, but I don't really have a you – know, like when we put our defense on the field, there's not many teams where I'm like, oh, yeah, we should be able to stop them because we haven't shown oh. any signs of that all year long of being able to hold anybody down. If Miles Garrett doesn't get to the quarterback – or Denzel Ward doesn't tip a ball every once in a while, we're in big trouble. Right, which we're Miles Miles returned to practice, yeah. I think, yesterday yep. as well. Had that MRI because uh, he was banged up in the game right before the bye against the Raiders. So it's nice to see that he is back uh, at, at practice. It's not one of those things where he's going to wait until the last minute, a limited fashion on Friday. He was, he, he was there, so uh, he must be pretty good to go. Uh, also, so coming in here, the preview to the Texans game, uh, one thing I wanted to point out, so Blake, you had it wrote down here, they're two and six yeah. coming into this game. So just some of their losses, okay, that teams that they've had to play, Kansas City, tough, Baltimore, mm. Pittsburgh, Tennessee, Green Bay, and then they lost in a shootout with the Minnesota Vikings. So wow. are the Texans really... As bad as what they're, I mean, I think that I don't think they're good, but are the teams that they played? Who else is winning most of those games? No, they had the absolute worst, <laughs> uh, the beginning. yeah, beginning of the season schedule. And their I've coach. seen like of this full, yeah, and then they fire their coach and everything, <laughs> right? Um, and you got to, if if I remember correctly, beginning of the year, like Brandon Cooks was not playing well, you know, it was Deshaun Watson throwing to Will Fuller and Everybody. anybody else he could find, maybe. And it just wasn't all that great. But now all of a sudden, Brandon Cooks is kind of, you know, more integrated into that offense. And they seem to be getting a rapport, a good connection. And now he's kind of got two legitimate weapons out there. Not to mention the tight ends are really good. We don't really have good linebackers. So yep. that could be tough for us too. Right. So just kind of going through there and looking, I was like, man, you know, as much as we've kind of said, you know, Houston's, you know, not very good. And I looked at kind of the teams they played and I'm like, well, I don't, I don't see those as circle and wins for us. If we were oh, playing, I, we might be two. Those. We'd be two and six. Yeah, I would have liked to see them beat Minnesota. Right, but and that was a shoot. That was a shootout type of game. Um, and this them. shows that their defense, Houston's defense, is not what it once right. was. It's not Correct. that great no, this year. I'm seeing they're giving up 34, 33, 28, 31, 30, 42, 35, and 25. So this could be another game like where we got to put up 35. A Dallas, there, I mean, type of a Dallas yeah, game. Yeah, because yeah. they're probably going to put up 30. I, what I need to see out of the Browns this week is we cannot let them go on 12 and 15 play drives that take up half the quarter. We, we got to have the ball more than twice and a half this yeah. game because the offense needs to get into a rhythm. We need to be able to establish what we want to do early in the game as opposed to playing into what they want to do. You know, they're not really a running team. We are a running team. I looked up. They give up 5.1 yards per carry. So, I mean, if, if, especially if Nick Chubb's healthy, yeah, we should be able to run the ball all day on him. Well, and that's been our problem these last handful of games. We haven't had that one two punch that we were just, you know, knocking people in the mouth with the first part of the season. And we haven't, we're going to need Baker to make a couple throws because they're going to, you know, they're going to dare him to throw. And they don't, they've only, I think they've got two interceptions this year. So I don't want to see any turnovers from Baker. Uh, they've only forced five turnovers all year. And they have, uh, I think, 18 sacks on the season. Miles has nine by himself. Uh, so yeah. um, our offensive line should play well. We should – Baker – we need Baker to come out early, hit a couple throws that's going to loosen up that box and then unleash Nick Chubb. Hopefully he's, he's back and uh, Kareem Hunt because we need to keep their offense off the field because our defense isn't going to stop them. No, and so that's my thing too. So I, actually I'm not as concerned about Baker. What I've seen the last couple games is – He's going to be okay since OBJ isn't there. <laughs> ah, there it is. <laughs> but, no, in all seriousness, the receivers need to catch the ball this week. Yes. Oh, 100%. Like, what happened two weeks ago was absolutely unacceptable for professionally paid ball catchers. You have to catch the ball. It Agreed. Just, especially yep. when they're – and come on, Baker's hitting guys right in the hands. I mean, yep. his accuracy was on point in that Oakland game. He's got to make the play. Especially in a, a windstorm. Yeah, well, that's, that threw, was impressive. I thought he made some nice throws. Uh, mm -hmm. Sunday's forecast isn't looking great either. Oh, geez. So, what, what is up. it? 
uh, fifty percent chance of. It's probably rain. you're probably because you're going. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, gonna just quit going to games. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, I mean, I just you know, there's nothing I like to do more on Sundays than just going <laughs> enjoy Wreck everybody's Cleveland's, day. Yeah, enjoy Cleveland weather. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, personally, nah, I'm but, jealous. No, nah, get to go to the game. So. Yeah, I, I got lucky. I got you know, I got a hook. So, um, but yeah, no, I mean, I I could see it being another like run game. Uh, you know, both teams now. David Johnson, he's. Uh, they're saying he's probably not going to play. I saw he was warming up off, you know, off to the side and doing, you know, yeah. Buddy Duke. Duke yeah, Johnson Duke. revenge game, which yeah. is, which, which is, I'm fine with that, which is I crazy. Like Duke, but. Uh, I was, he, so David Johnson's their leading rusher of 408 yards. Um, their second leading rusher is Deshaun Watson. Yeah. You know, Duke Johnson only has 34 carries on the season for 95 yards. Both our running backs have had better games than that. Yeah, but he was never that kind of back for Cleveland. He's never been that back period. He's always been that, you know, third down passing running you know, right. running back threat. Which I think He's only he got had, fourteen catches on the year. I know. I That's think surprising. he had I think he had sixteen carries this week. So yeah. he had eighteen carries in the prior weeks. Uh but never, you know, they don't use him in that situation of right. being like the running back guy. Um David Johnson probably hasn't gotten as many carries, you know, he's averaging four yards a carry, which isn't bad, you know. Um, he's got 103 attempts. 103 attempts. Watson's got 40. My biggest problem going into this game is Will Fuller is really fast. Yep. Brandon Cooks is really fast. We can't cover Randall anybody. Cobb is still, you know, able to get open in the slot. Yep. And then, oh, say we do cover those guys. Deshaun Watson's just going to run for a first down anytime he wants yep. to. So. Yeah. It's going to be as much as I want Garrett being able to get after the quarterback, Vernon getting after the quarterback. I'd want to try to keep Watson in the pocket as much as possible yep. because as soon as you overrun, he'll step right out, and I don't trust us catching up to him. So, so just for fun, I was going to say real quick, everybody this weekend on Sunday, let's play the Sandejo drinking game. So every time the heat <laughs> gets I got long. things to do, Josh. I, <laughs> I got things to do. I don't know what kind of drinking games you, you're up to you'd on be staying, You'd be staying yeah. in Cleveland. Yeah, you what, there. This uh, is not going to be it. We're going to be bashing Sandejo so bad next week. Uh, I'm predicting the future here. I yeah. uh, So I'm not afraid of their running game, especially if David Johnson doesn't play. Right. right. Um, so I'd like to see the Browns line up kind of, you know, 4D linemen. Keep contain. Keep Deshaun. I mean, I teach eighth graders this. Keep the quarterback in the pocket. Do not let him break contain. Okay, and let's drop seven. Well, we play Lamar Jackson twice a year. We should be ready for this kind of thing. Yeah, you should. The yeah. thing is, is Deshaun Watt. He's obviously not as athletic and as elusive as Lamar Jackson, but he can do a lot of the same things, and he throws the he's ball a, a very million times good better. Yes. Thrower. Yes. So when I say keep him in the pocket, it's not because I don't think he can throw. It's because I think you got to try to. Make him one dimensional. You can't be worried about his scrambling and his passing. You got to try to focus on one or the other. Um, uh, Will Fuller scares me to death this week because we maybe can't, he'll get hurt. The soft tissue injury. <laughs> yeah, he, because he's we due. can't cover anybody, and he's having a pretty good season. Uh, Five hundred ninety yards. He leads the team right now. Um, and then Brandon Cooks is one of those guys where he'll be non-existent for two or three yep. weeks. Then all of a sudden he'll be like Brandon Cooks had. 280 yards receiving on 37 catches today. Right. You know, right. Yep. and it's like, where did this come from? It's like he just got, all, you know, his last five games worth of catches in one game. So yep. um, I think I picked us to lose this game at the beginning of the year. And it was before, you know, and it was because of Deshaun Watson. I said, you know, I think we're better, a better roster, but Deshaun Watson is really good. I mean, he's on pace to throw for almost 5,000 yards. He's a gamer. Yeah. You know? And Deshaun Watson, you know, a lot of people forget. He was the Mahomes the year. I mean, he was Mahomes yeah. before Mahomes was in yeah. the NFL. Everybody looked at him as he's the next young thing. You know, he's the young guy taking the league over, and then Mahomes come out, and everybody kind of is like, all right, well, Deshaun, you're good, but you're not Mahomes. Right. Okay, and then and then Watson was the running quarterback, was the athletic, and then Lamar Jackson yeah, came, came along. They're like, oh, that's Lamar Jackson. He's the – so Watson's kind of like the mold of both of those type of quarterbacks in one. And I think he's kind of underrated because of the, you know, team he plays on, not a great record. Uh, doesn't have Hopkins there anymore to, you know, draw that other, you know, all those looks, you know, because having another star player, Will Fuller's your number one. Is Will Fuller's very talented, but he's not Hopkins. We, uh, you know, we talk about like is Carson Wentz the only thing that keeps the Eagles afloat at all? Deshaun Watson's been doing that for the Texans yes. since he, you know, the only difference is, you know, why Carson Wentz is winning three games. I know they only got two wins this year, but I mean, he's been like taking them to eight and eight. 
Nine right. and seven. Stuff well, like they should have. I mean, in I was, playoffs they, last I was going to say, let's not forget, they were literally they were a, a half away from going to the Super Bowl. I thought they were going to the Super Bowl. And then, you know, Patrick Mahomes was just underhand flipping the ball to people and you know, <laughs> yeah. just put, were putting up 40. Uh, defensively, they don't have a they don't have a lot of guys on their defense that I'm scared of. There's one guy that you know he's getting older, but he could wreck your game plan. Is they still have JJ Watt? Yep. Which, by the way, he's still uh, and he's got four sacks on the season, so not bad for a guy who's injured all the time. Uh, I said I texted you guys like a week ago. They said in the off season, I think the Browns should go after JJ Watt. I think I'd, I'd I would do it. I know he's getting up there. I know that. Uh, he's had some injury problems, which you know. Put him with on the inside with Miles Garrett on the outside, though. Like I know, like he's Olivier, thirty-one. Olivier Vernon was supposed to be this out, other outside guy with Miles. I want to see Miles paired up with a, a dominant inside presence one time. You know where like they got to double the two guys in the middle, so it leaves him one on one on the outside. Yeah, that'd be so, that'd be nice. By the way, I imagine I'm calling JJ Watt old. How does that feel for you guys here in this room? Don't worry about me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he's 31. I'm like, ah, you know, he's getting up there. Career's probably over. You know, the well, funny, if he the gets funny. to retire soon, I get to retire yeah. soon. <laughs> Hopefully my career is over soon. The also. funny thing is yeah. I do that all the time, though. I'll look at guys' ages, and they'll be like 28, 29. Like, ooh, it's kind of old for a running back, you know. Right. But, but it's all it's right. all in perspective, right? <laughs> right. So yeah. they are super old for what they do. Yeah. But in real life, I mean, no. He's, yeah. he, he's a young dude because if 31's old, then get my walker out, boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh for for the audience, you know, Josh is actually older than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm the by, youngest. By like eleven shit. days. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know, I put in here. You got to contain Watson. Uh, you know, as far as our offense is concerned, you know, they've only forced five turnovers all season, two picks, three fumble recoveries. Um, I want to see us get back to doing what we do. Like we said, the last couple of weeks, we haven't been able to establish our ground game. I think part of that is we've been down early. Part of that is. Um, no Wyatt Teller, uh, and part of that is no Nick John or not Nick Johnson, Nick Chubb. <laughs> I don't know who wow. Nick Johnson is. <laughs> what? Not, see, he's I, that guy from I see what you did there. Uh, so, you know, I want to see. I want to see Stefanski call a good game here. I want to see us. You know, if if we win the toss, do we take the ball? No, I don't know because if they, time. if they if they stop us and they go right down and score it. Now, all of a sudden, I feel like we lost 14 points because they're yeah. probably going to score right out the half. Yeah, but pro- if we give them the ball first, they're probably going to score right at the beginning of the first half. It'll be that'll be interesting. That's a, I mean, that's a good take on. You know, we want to we want to establish our run game. We want to get ahead early, so we're not forced to you know get out of character for us. I feel like if we give them the ball first, as soon as Baker and the offense steps on the field, we're going to be down seven. You know, I think I think maybe we do go get the ball first if we have that option because coming out of the bye, so we're. As prepared for any game during the season as we're going to be. There should be no reason we can't go down. Everybody's, the for the most part, is the healthiest we've been in a while. Um, yeah, I, th- I think you take the ball and you go out there and you stick it to them quick and say, this, we're going you know, to establish our game yes. right away, like you said. And take it from there. I feel like it, it sounds crazy, but if we're down 7 nothing, it's almost like we're already in catch-up mode. You know, like... Because if we come out and we try to establish the run on that first drive and, you know, say we go three and out or maybe we get one first down, but then we have to punt, we don't get any points, we give them the ball back, solid chance with our defense, it's going to be 14 nothing in the first quarter. I mean, I know it's a different defense. And, like, when I say a different defense, I mean the worst defense in the league. But that kind of happened in the Dallas game. You know what I mean? We got behind. We stuck to the game plan. We kept kind of grinding, grinding, grinding. And eventually, you know, we got ahead. Now, obviously, like, that's a very different defense. That is a non-existent defense. But, you know. We actually just got a comment on the uh, the live page. They want to know um, why the Browns didn't make any moves for the defense before the trade deadline. We haven't touched on it on this episode. We, we talked a little last week. We talked week. about yeah. a little bit last week. Um, basically, what, what my opinion was, was the our front office, to me, that tells me that they think we're right. a year out from being re- legit contenders. And they weren't willing to, you know, sell the team or the future to make that move for a defensive player in a year where they think even if we add a piece this year, it's still not going to be enough. Right. And we also said, too, though, that it didn't, there weren't very many trades no. at all at the deadline. So I don't think no. there were a lot of sellers. Right. You know, I think the price was the price is, high, yeah. super high on some right. guys that, you know, what you would give away if, you know, a fifth round pick, you know, last year, you're maybe giving away a, a third or something like that, which is yeah. not worth it. That's yeah. the. 
I think, like I said, I think if if the front office of Barry and Stefanski were looking at our team and they're like, you know, we're a safety, we're getting rid of Sandejo away from you know being legit Super Bowl contenders, I think they would have made that move. They would have given up whatever it needed to make that move. But I think looking at our roster, there's enough holes on that defense, and still a question mark at quarterback. Where even if we made that move, we're probably still not legit Super Bowl contenders this year. I, I can kind of agree with that. And we got to remember, you know, as Browns fans, you know, we're living here in the moment. We still have a Grant Delpit that we drafted that we're expecting yep. to come back. Um, Greedy. Greedy. Yeah, you know, so you got some guys that are out. You're expecting to come back and be, you know, starter, you know, big yep. playmakers on your defense. So if you give away something and you bring somebody in as, you know, a one-year type rental and you give away something, it doesn't work out. Now you're going to try to bring that guy back. It, it could just kind of cause some friction for next year problems down the road. Kind of like how Blake said, how far are we really expecting to go this year? Um, I think it's kind of a combination of both. I think I read a thing from uh, Terry Pluto, Cleveland uh, writer. He said goals for the the Browns this season was they wanted to be above 500, and they thought if they could get a playoff spot, that'd be like a big win for this season. The Browns are very much in line to, to do achieve their goals this year. Nowhere in their goals was – we're going to win the Super Bowl this year. So I think I see us being very aggressive in the offseason when it comes to our defense, when it comes to the draft. I th- that I read that the goal for this season was to build the offense and get Baker Mayfield as comfortable as he can in this offense to judge him in 16 games this year. And because they knew no matter – how good the defense was, if the offense wasn't going to be good, then there's going to be no way of telling if Baker was good, and then we were going to be back, set back another year or two. So that it was all about the offense this year so we can evaluate the quarterback position. Yeah, and I mean, we got to remember, too, we were only halfway through this year. I mean, we played eight games. We got eight, eight games left to go, and there's a very realistic you know, possibility here that we do make the playoffs. And I mean, despite all the injuries before the season started and stuff that we talked about, the Browns have remained relatively healthy you know, no no major injuries to like except for Odell and Nick Chubb. Well, and I, we have our differences on the Odell thing too. But all I know is that the first week Odell was out, we led the league in drops. Then the very next week, so but Baker was also putting the ball where it needed to be. Anyway, <laughs> all all I'm saying is if you look at like Pittsburgh or you know Baltimore, who were kind of still chasing a couple key injuries to their team over the next eight games, all of a sudden we might jump them. Big Ben. I, Big Ben, ben yeah, because Mason Rudolph, I mean, you might as well not have a quarterback in the game. <laughs> and I mean, with Baltimore, say say Lamar goes out there and he gets his knee blown out or something, not even him. Like, their running game's taking a hit because they just can't get stuff figured out right now. They lose a couple guys on defense, and all of a sudden, they're beatable. I you know what I mean? Agree. So, we're still hanging right in there where if things fall a certain way, we, we could make a run at something. I don't know if it's a Super Bowl for sure, you know, but I'd love we to could see get us, a, a playoff win or two. I'd maybe. love to see us win 10 games. Maybe get to eleven, and uh, and then maybe win that first that first round. Of okay, the playoffs. yeah, it'd so. be tough. But if we if the Browns, first of all, if the Browns make the playoffs, I'm going to be on cloud nine because right. I didn't think it ever happened. And then if we win a playoff game, they better shut the state down for real because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be going nuts. So here's my ta- so my take on the whole playoff thing and winning a playoff game. We better get we better get lucky and get to play Buffalo because I don't want I. Do we stand a chance against Kansas City? No. Have we shown that we really stand a chance against Pittsburgh? Even though I think Pittsburgh is a little overrated offensively, they're but very they're still good the they're still the Steelers, well and we're still the Browns, and they own us. Yeah, I mean we're good. so it could be we make the playoffs, and it gets and it's kind of depressing what we have in that last game. Uh, obviously, we'd be excited to get there, uh, but going against one of those two teams would be a tall task. But if we can get a Buffalo playing them, you know, they've looked shaky at times. I Las think Vegas. They, yeah, I, I think they're be surprised if they're there. You know, uh, or the Tennessee kind of wins out. We play again. Uh, Tennessee doesn't scare me like they would have last year. Not right, not right now. Not right now. I agree. Uh, but it's going to get colder. When it gets colder, Derrick Henry, Henry warms Derrick, up. Derrick Henry runs a little harder. <laughs> yep. He gets 30 carries a game, and he's harder to tackle the 30th time they give him the ball because he's ran you over. So there's another podcast I listen to. They call him Derrick Yeti. <laughs> Just nice. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Very nice. Uh, but uh, real quick, so kind of off topic here a little bit. I found some interesting stats to uh, throw in here. Uh, and it was an article I read that said, 
who's having the better year? Who's the better quarterback in 2020? Baker Mayfield or Lamar Jackson? Yep. I okay. Lamar has not Ma- been that impressive. Right. Okay. But if you ask anybody who's the be- who, if, I mean, if you just ask anybody right now, they're going to say Lamar Jackson's. He's. I mean, he's reigning he's MVP. The, yeah, he's the MVP. Yeah. He's a better quarterback than Baker Mayfield. All right. So here, let's look at some of the numbers. Okay. So Jackson on the year 134 for 213. For 62.9 completion percentage, Baker, 137, three more completions on 10 more attempts, 61.4. Pretty close. Yep. And completion percentage. And Baker doesn't get to play the Browns defense. Like, Lamar right. got to play the Browns defense week one. Right. Jackson's passing yards, 1,513. Baker, 1,514. Has one more passing yard. Touchdowns, Baker 15, Lamar 12. Interceptions, Lamar Jackson, four, Baker, seven. Yards per attempt, Lamar, 7.1, Baker, 6.8. Average yards per game, 189 for Baker, 189 for Lamar. QB rating, 90.9 for Baker, 95.1 for Lamar. QBR, Lamar, 61.9, Baker, 71.2. He's got a better QBR than Lamar Jackson does this year. How many rushing yards does Lamar have, though? 439. What about Baker? Has he got, like, 12? Baker, 17. 12. Uh, <laughs> Baker yeah. has. I had a first down run last can't week. Can't be so. more than 65. Okay. 65. Yeah. So, obviously, that's what takes Lamar into yeah, a different. But as a passer, as a pocket quarterback, you could make the argument that Baker is a better pocket passer, better quarterback in 2020. Than Lamar Jackson. You don't have to make the argument. It's just the. Tr- I mean, I I know, and I've been saying this this whole time. It's not just because I don't like Lamar Jackson or the Ravens. I really don't. But yeah, me either. I, when I watch <laughs> him it. play, yeah. I mean, he's just he's not a quarterback. He's not a good, you know, drop back, read the defense, make the right throw, and put it on the money kind of quarterback. I'll tell you this though, I feel like Lamar Jackson at least looks more comfortable. In games, sometimes well, and he's, right? he's like run the same offense for right. three years now. That was if, that yeah. was the other point this article made too. Is Lamar Jackson's in, in a system that was built for him to be successful? Yeah, Baker's in a system where he found out who his head coach was ninety days before the first game. So okay, I get that, but that doesn't mean that whenever there's pocket pressure, just because you have a new coach, when there's pocket pressure, doesn't mean you have to panic just because you got a new coach ninety days ago. You know, well, I want to see we've seen that kind of you know go away a little bit for Baker. I, I think have we? Because I, I we just so. played the Steelers like two weeks ago and he looked pretty scared. Okay, dude, the Steelers were bad. Like that was a yeah. bad game. And that was only two. That was only two games ago. That was three games yeah, ago. Three games ago. So yeah, and, come on. Now. And well, Odell's hurt now. Odell, Odell played. Yeah, so he's gonna be fine. Guy. He's gonna be fine. <laughs> yeah. What scares What scares me for the Browns going forward is it seems like anytime we play a real physical defensive front. That's when our O line starts to suffer. That's when Baker looks real nervous in the pocket. Um, I don't. We don't have a ton of those like crazy hard defensive fronts on the second half of our schedule. We got Baltimore again. We got the Steelers again. Eagles front maybe. Yeah, Eagles front is. Um, yeah, they're good. But you know, we. I want Baker to look confident in the pocket, even when things aren't comfortable. How much of that though is we can't fool anybody with our run game? Like as good as Hunt is. Hunt is not Nick Chubb. You give Nick Chubb the ball, and he gets you six, seven yards. You give Hunt the ball, and you get three. three. And right. Everybody kind of knows that's what you're going to get. And I'm not saying he's a bad player. He's excellent. But I'm saying I think that this adds a different dimension to the offense. It, Kareem Hunt's well, averaging 4.6 yards per carry. Nick Chubb's averaging 5.9. I'd be interested yeah. to know... Because and his yards were coming the, after he wore everybody out. Too. The, yeah, before the injury compared to after. What is right. what has Hunt done since since Nick Chubb? Yeah, yes, because down. we saw it in how many games where Hunt was coming in and he was you know ripping off ten yards here, twelve yeah. yards. Well, he here. was up over five or six yards to carry against that Baltimore team in Week One. Right. So I mean, I'd, I'd be interested to see because his numbers have been affected a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and we sit here and we're talking about Baker and kind of judging him. And we, I think it's, you know, because we're hard on the Browns. We're always like that. We come in here, you know, and we want to break down everything, and we beat up Baker, and sometimes we're sticking up for Baker. He's he's dealt with a lot of injuries. If we would have said, you know, in years past, you're going to lose your Nick Chubb. You're going to lose your best lineman 
at that point in the year. You're losing him. Your you're gonna you're gonna lose your number yes. one wide receiver. Yeah. Your tight end. You're gonna lose your tight end for a few games. You know your defense. Uh, you know your defense. They're, they're gonna be terrible. one of the worst in the league. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, a, a lot of pressure kind of you know put on Baker, and obviously we're gonna be critics and judge him. And uh, you know I think it's fair to do so at times, but some of the aspects of the game he has to deal with, I don't think that we kind of sit back and we're like, man, well, yeah, he is missing those pieces. What if, what if we had everybody together? What would we be like? Right, and I don't think we've mentioned yet, but Austin Hooper will be back. No, and yes. that should be back this week. And if he's got, yes. if we have Chubb and Hooper back in this offense, coming out of the bye, rested up and ready to rock and roll. Yep. We could really come out and stick it to Houston early rather than worrying about them getting up early. Yeah, I, I think, hope that's the case. I think uh, Hooper is underrated in our, in our run game. He's yeah. actually a very yeah. solid blocker. Yep. Yes. Um, and I'd much rather have him on the end of the line blocking than David and Joku. Sure, and we've seen the progression of Hooper as a receiver in this offense from week one to week eight. Yes. How, oh, he's get, you know, more it, involved. It's, we, yeah. we talked about at the beginning of the year, like, oh, you know, the, they got to get used to this offensive system. And they, you know, they're still learning. And then it's like, oh, come on, they should be better than this. But if we look at it, they've actually been progressively getting better. So it really gives me a lot of hope for the rest of the season that, you know, Hooper's going to be that tight end that we paid him to come in here and be for right. Baker in this offense. And, I, and I'm interested to see, you know, Baltimore round two this year, Pittsburgh round two yeah. this year, yeah. because – you know, we've seen it where we've competed against those two teams in games with far less talent and a way worse yeah. head coach. With we we ran all there. over Baltimore last year, the yeah. one game, right? So with that offensive and we've line, we've seen that. Press. So this was Kevin Stefanski's first round. You know, playing against a Mike Tomlin, playing against a Harbaugh. Of okay, really, he didn't know going in game plan. You know, as soon as our game plan was, hey, we're going to run the ball, control the clock, that went out the window in like the first five minutes, and yeah. it was like, oh, crap. With Fitzpatrick running it into the end zone. You know, and here's the di- and here's the difference in, in that. Now, we're totally – we're different teams. But Baltimore, almost exact same thing happens to them when they're playing the Steelers with Lamar throwing a pick six to open up the game. Yep. And I was like, man, this is – I just saw this. But the well, the better coach team in that game that knew how to, you know – kept the game plan, was able to change the game plan in the middle of the game, kept Baltimore in it. They were still able to run the ball, still able to do the things they needed to do. But that comes from experience of playing each other and knowing what – I mean, those two teams have to know what they're doing. I mean, they know what each other's doing in the game. That's why they always play down to the wire. Not And not to knock Stefanski, but I've noticed that he kind of – he sticks to the game plan when things – are kind of out the window. Like he right. continues to like kind of almost beat a dead horse. That how much is that? And because that's the only way we can. That's the only way we can win. I think right. it has to. Right. I think it has to do with that. And I think at times you have to play. I think there's times that that benefits you. Right. I. I mean, we've seen it in some times where a team gets down, then all they do is pass, and you're like, man, well, they just you were only down ten. If you go down, and you score a touchdown, you stick to your run game, you can use it the rest of the game. We've kind of seen that, but there are times I think where we haven't, and those games seen like a big adjustment, and. I put it on what we were able to do talent wise and what we're seeing and what he's probably seeing, but it comes back on the coach a little bit too. It's almost, it's a little bit of give and take. You got to put the blame on both of them too. If you see something's going wrong, you got to, you know, make sure that you're not doing that wrong again and again and again, which we tend to see in those blowout games. I think, I think the Browns have essentially one recipe for success and, I think if we have to try to get away from that, I don't think Stefanski's confident. I he he won't say this publicly. I don't think he 100 percent trusts Baker to go out there and carry us to a win if he has to throw the ball 35 times. No, but it what I really like about at least that, against a good team. What I like about this bye week being right in the middle of the season is it's kind of like you get to look at the full season as like a game for Stefanski. Like he hits a yes. first half, a halftime, and a second half. So maybe that first half was let's go out there and kind of see what my team looks like, see what my team can do, see what other teams are going to do against us, how we're going to react, how we're going to respond, which, you know, five and three, I think we've done really yeah, well, you know, all things considered. And um, I think the second half could be really, really good. You know, I, I think Baker is getting more comfortable in the offense. I think that he's building that trust with Stefanski. I mean, like you said, Zach, 90 days, right? He right. didn't even know who's that. Stefanski didn't know his quarterback. Till then, yeah. either. So, I mean, they're still getting to know each other. You kind of saw that with Lafleur and uh, Rogers last year. Yeah, there was some head butting. They didn't really, you know, how it was going to work out for a while, and then all of a sudden it was just click, 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 and then right. they're off rolling. So, 
Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, the second half. There's some games that, you know, I don't have circled as wins, but like the Baltimore and the Pittsburgh game, I'm just interested to see what we can do different in those two games. I'm not saying we got to win those games. I want to see us compete. I want to yes. see us look like yeah. we belong on the field. Makes yeah. me feel better if we yeah. have to play Kansas City or Pittsburgh in a round one of the playoffs. Because like, right now I look at that game and I'm like, oh, boy. Obviously, I want to win. I think there's five must wins on the second half of the schedule for the Browns. Um, but I will learn more about the Browns in a close loss to the Ravens than I will if we blow out the Texans. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, like, to me, if we if we come out and we win, you know, our average margin of victory against the Texans, Eagles, Jets, Jags, and Giants is, you know, we win each game, one of those games by 20 points. But then we lose to the Titans, Steelers, and Ravens by thirty points each game. What do we know about? What do we still know about this team? I yeah. wouldn't yeah. call uh, the Texans or the Eagles. I feel like those next two games, those are not going to be walk through games. Those are I. I mean, right. don't call me crazy. Well, we got, I wouldn't be surprised think, if we got slapped. I would by say both those teams. I three of the next not, four. I think they're not easy wins for us because how bad our defense is. Exactly, and that's I, what. I think we can score on both of these teams. You think we're you think we're so, just running it up on Eagles defense? So I their think, defense. I mean their defense is. They, I mean they got four wins. They and one of them is against Dallas. Okay, so that's looking, one of our wins. So looking at okay, no. so going into the rest of the season, I've kind of had the same um, thoughts as Justin in a way. I think that I think that there are games obviously we must win. I think that there are two games that define if we're going to make the playoffs or not, and it is. Houston and Philly. I think that that separates us from going 10 and 6, 9 and 7, 8 and 8, you know. I think that obviously we play Houston, Philly, Jacksonville, Titans, Ravens, Giants, Jets, Pittsburgh. Okay? So let's say we beat Jacksonville, Giants, Jets, right? So that's there's eight. three wins. That's eight wins. Yep. Okay, so we got eight. Okay, let's say we play them tough, but we're going to lose to Baltimore and uh Pittsburgh. Okay, so now we got two more losses. So that would eight put us eight at five. eight and five. So your other three games, Tennessee. Might play them tough. We're going to give it to Tennessee. So now it puts us at eight and six. Those other two games now either take you into the playoffs or they probably have you looking on the outside looking in at eight and eight. You know, nine and seven, you probably are getting in. But AFC has a lot of good teams this year with a lot of good records. Yep. Um, so nine and seven – is a great record. It might not get you in this year. Ten and six, I think you're in. You're comfortable. Um, so I think these next two games are big. Philly, they've played really bad at times, but like Blake, you mentioned earlier, they have Carson Wentz. He can he can just go out there and uh, their new wide receiver Ful- Fulgham. Fulgham. I mean, the He's guy they just brought him off the street yeah, and and he gets, and he yeah, lights man. it up, you know. So and they got Jalen Rager. He's back, the rookie, you mm-hmm. know, and he's healthy. Miles Sanders, Sanders is going to be coming back. back. Yep. They do have a good defensive front. So it'll be – I don't think it'll be an easy win. I think that those two are our biggest test. If we win those games, um, I really like our chances of making the playoffs. If we lose one of those games, I'm a little worried that now we have to beat a Tennessee, a Baltimore, mm-hmm. or a Pittsburgh. So – you know, starting off with the Texans game here for the rest of the season, I just got an alert said that uh, David Johnson didn't practice today, yep. so his status for Sunday is up, up in, in the, the air. air. Right? Okay, that's all that too. too. So, unlike um, they said, a source said unlikely right. though, unlikely to play. Okay, so so say he doesn't play, or even if he does, and he's limited, you know, or whatever. That they they're really one dimensional then, because like you said, Duke Johnson's not going to come out here and get twenty five carries for you know one hundred and sixty yards against the Browns. It's not going to happen. So I don't really know what else they have as far as running back goes, but. Buddy Howe and Scotty Phillips. All right, so never heard of either of those guys. <laughs> yeah, never heard of either of those guys. But you know, so that way that kind of gives us a little edge there in that game. So I'm hoping we can pull off a victory starting off the second half of the season. I mean, it's going to be a tough game. Like I, I, I see. Have, I think it's going to be a shootout. I, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting this week. Unless um, we can control the clock, ground yes. and pound, kind of like what Oakland did, or Oakland, Las Vegas did to us. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Um, it's interesting to see uh, Romeo Crennel coaching against the Browns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, who would have thought that we'd say that at, in 2020, that Romeo Crennel would still be coaching and he's going to be, and he's an interim head, head coach. coach. Yeah. You no, know, how bad how bad would it suck, though, too? We come out of this bye, and this is a game where it kind of could springboard us into 
playoff contention second half of the season and Deshaun Watson dominates us and he should be on our team. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. You know, I, I was mean, wondering where you're going with that. Cause I was oh, like, yeah. that, that wouldn't shock me. I mean, I, and it's, it sucks to say that cause I'm like one of those uh, like headlight Brown fans. Like, I don't care what happens. I'm like, we're going to be, we're going to be whoever. And this is a game where like, you have to kind of, be prepared that I mean, it, well, may, it we, may be like that. And this team here that we're playing in Houston, they're not like – they're two and six, but they're not like the other two and six teams where yeah. they're kind of wanting to – they're not searching for wins. They're okay with losing, maybe trying to get a quarterback because they need one. No, they're going out there and they really don't care. I don't, And they don't have any picks anyway, so they don't care about being <laughs> yeah. in the top, you know, three to have a early pick next year. Because Bill O'Brien screwed them out of yeah. all of their picks. Dolphins are if they had set. any but any other quarterback, I think the Browns win this game going away. But yeah, I like think, if they were throwing out like Matt Schaub, yeah, yes. oh, yeah, I would say, those, yeah, I, would say I think the Browns yeah, win this game odds. easily. But I think just Deshaun Watson is a game changer, and yeah. like I said, it would just suck for him to kind of like dash our playoff hopes right out of the bye when. He he should be a Cleveland Brown. We were just staring right at him at the draft and said, mm, "Yeah, who wants him?" Text, yeah, Houston. Yep, go ahead. Yep. So that that would that would really that would be really upsetting. Um, I think it's going to be a shootout. I don't. I'm not really afraid of their defense. I do think Baker's going to have to step up and he's going to have to make a couple throws, and our receivers are going to have to step up and actually catch the ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, it's going to be a fun second half of the year. Some big games, and when have we said that? You know, oh, in the second half, we can, we can so, do it, take care of business. We could be right in the playoffs. So one game that I'm just going to throw this out there real quick, and I'll let you guys kind of talk about it real quick after I'm done bringing it up. But what about the New York Giants later in the season? Now, their defense has been playing a little better as of late. I'm not worried about that game. Hey, not, I, I mean, not, not just a little bit of like a trap type thing or anything like that. For oh, me- I, I definitely don't. Like I said, some of these ga- teams uh, that we had to play coming up here in this second half of the season, like a Giants, Giants really haven't looked bad in their last four games. I they mean, got, their last four weapons. games, they could have they lost. They beat uh, the football team twenty to nineteen. Okay, so they got that win. They lost the Eagles twenty two twenty one. They were up for most of that game, and the Eagles came back in the fourth quarter. Could have won that one. Buccaneers. You know, if Daniel Jones throws that pass. Uh, they played well that whole game. Tampa yep. Bay, Tampa Bay, as some people are calling them, uh, struggles struggled in that game mightily. Okay, but their two point conversion pass interference that wasn't called. What should he threw the ball two seconds earlier? Yeah, but it still was a flag. How they picked that up, I don't know. Because um, Tom Brady plays on the other team. Yeah, so that's <laughs> a win there. And then they beat the football team this week. Um, so if you kind of you go back and look, they played the Steelers oh, pretty well week one, lost by ten. Uh, Bears that aren't that great this year, but they have a great record. They only lost by four. Forty ers blew them out of the water. Rams they only lost by eight. I mean they've played some teams tough, and and they're missing Saquon Barkley, and they got Devontae Freeman that they signed like three weeks ago as their lead back, and he's always hurt. hurt. It's yeah. Wayne Goleman for them. Yeah, yeah so Goleman it, season. It's. <laughs> That game is a little worrisome of being like that kind of trap game where you're like a Tampa Bay looking ahead to play the Saints. Well, they shouldn't have been looking ahead. I don't know what well, they were looking at this week. Yeah. Uh, so here's my thing. Any game the Browns play in the second half of the season where that team has a quarterback that isn't legally blind uh, <laughs> makes me nervous yeah. because <laughs> because we can't stop a nosebleed. And so okay. if, you know – if if Daniel Jones is any good at all, which at times he's good and at times he's bad, he'll light us up for three hundred. You know, uh, they have weapons. Sterling Shepard is, is good. If if Golden Tate, you know, quits fighting with the coaches or whatever, he's still solid. Uh-huh. Evan Ingram is a crazy good athlete at the tight end position. So and they're starting to you find ways to get him more involved. Yeah, kind of. Wayne Goldman's uh, running the ball well the last three games. So. I'm not taking anything for granted. I think there's five games at the Browns. If they come out and play the way they're capable, they should win. Yep. That being said, I will not be shocked if we lose any of them. Yeah. Because well, the defense is so bad. The what, thing with I'll just ahead. say real quick, the thing with the Giants is that's coming right off of the Ravens game. 
It's going to be a tough game. No matter who wins, it's going to be tough. And a short then, week because that's on a, we play the Ravens yeah, on Monday yeah, night. Yeah, you're right. And then it's Giants. And then right, who's sitting right after the Giants? Ah, oh, the Jets. How easy would it be to come out of that Baltimore game looking like, oh, New York, New York. It's going to be an easy road here for the next two weeks. Yeah. No, I agree. You know what I mean? Trying to get ready for that final with uh, a <laughs> Trap Pittsburgh. game looking forward to the big game with the Jets. <laughs> yeah, and, and, I mean, we're at New York for both of those games. And I, I'm not saying it's going to play a factor, but so many games that are played in New York, players after the game of losing teams complain about the field conditions almost yep. every single week. Yep. And it was like that. So if you guys were watching the Jets at uh, the Jets and Patriots this week, Cam Newton was slipped numerous times on the and wide receivers were slipping numerous times on that field. Why they can't get this right, I don't know. Maybe they're thinking it keeps them in games. Well, if we're in the playoff hunt, still I'll go up and lay down some new sod. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's a thing. It's a. I mean, it, that is the field that took out the whole 49ers team. Yeah, that's is true. That field. That's true. Um, Back to back weeks. But a big game here that Blake, I figured you might have circled um, if your boy's back and healthy is. Uh, you're taking Baker over Gardner and against Jacksonville if we play him. That's oh, your boy. It's, it's just Jake Luton the rest Luton. of the season, man. Yeah. They already know what they have in Gardner. They're trying to see if this kid has anything before they go and pick a quarterback in the second know. spot next. That's Blake's boy. The Texans, you know, they only have two wins. They're both against the Jaguars. <laughs> so, so Gardner didn't play last week, but Jake Luton played really well. Yeah. I had to pick him up in fantasy, so. Yeah. Um, I, I got D, him. I had uh, yeah, DJ I was Chark the, on my bench. So. I said I was the idiot who played Tom Brady over Jake Luton. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what were you thinking? You thought that they were going to have a shootout against the Saints? Yeah, I don't know. Another That's thing what that, I thought. that could be nice down the road, too, is so let's say the Steelers have 14, 15 oh, wins. Oh, and they what just are the sit everybody. They sit everybody. <laughs> now, here's the thing. It'd be a very, they very wouldn't do it for us, probably. Right? <laughs> and that means that we're right there on the cusp. They'll start their whole team. They They'll don't be care. like, hey, remember when we won in week 16? Do you remember and, when your uh, week 17? Ben hit, us, uh, hit our quarterback with uh, uh, his helmet? <laughs> yeah. Remember when and, we needed you guys to beat the yeah, Ravens we did, two years ago? We were ago. watching yeah. the end of the game on the Jumbotron in Pittsburgh, <laughs> <laughs> and you guys couldn't pull it off. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That was when Baker threw uh, three touchdowns, but he threw three picks. Yeah. Um, Feast or fam in that game. Yeah. So, you know, to me – I think we should beat Houston. I think we should beat Philly. I think we should beat Jacksonville. I want to see how we look in that Tennessee game. That's a, that's a team where if they're playing as well as they can, they're one of the best teams in the league, kind of struggling a little bit right now. So if we can come out and compete with them, maybe hold Derek uh, Henry down a little bit, score against that defense, that'll kind of tell me you know, how, what, what kind of team we really are. So I kind of, for me, I kind of have the Tennessee game circled in the second half because, like I said, Beating Houston, Philly, Jacksonville, Giants, and Jets, that doesn't tell me anything about our team. Especially if we win those games 35-34 to 34 because we gave up 34 points to a bad team again. Oh, that's what it's going to be. I mean, <laughs> let's, let's not lie here and say that the defense is going to post a, a, a donut. I mean, we're... We're definitely going to give up points. We're definitely going to give up yards. I read that in the bio, the, they were using the bye week as kind of some self reflection on the defense. And Stefanski was going to pay a little bit more attention to the defense in the bio week to see if they needed to make any schematic changes. That coaching, kind of thing. coaching changes. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. want to say, you know, do I know? I don't know if I know any strong or free safeties just walking around out there, but. I mean, geez. probably here in at Dover. High school, there's probably a tornado that could play better defense. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. I mean, it, so I, I wouldn't. I don't know if I agree that the, them winning those games doesn't tell me anything about the team because it's the NFL. So, I mean, we we saw Tampa Bay last week. Are mm-hmm. you going to tell me that they're not a contender just because they got blown out one game against the Saints? Okay, the Saints had their number one night. Big deal. You know, it's, they're not going to stop and say, "Oh, now we can't win the Super Bowl this year." So, I think it's 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 more along the lines of. Not so much whether we win or lose. It's how do we look in those games? How do we play? How do we respond? Because yeah. there's going to be adverse situations in every single one of these games. Things are going to happen. How do we handle it? How's Baker look? Is he coming along? I mean, it's not like college where like when the Buckeyes are playing Kent State and it's like, well, that didn't tell me anything about the Buckeyes because that's that's right. how that is. You right. know? If we come out and the Jets put up you know 35 on us and we win 38-35 on a last second field goal, and I'm, you're going to be like, man – Tells me a lot about the Browns. Like I said, (laughs) (laughs) that's true. I already know the defense is capable of letting Sam Darnold go nuts. (laughs) I mean, that's. I think all these games, 
They're going to be way closer than they need to be just because of how how bad our defense oh, I is. I agree. With that. That's how the first absolutely. half was. You're right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Every, yeah. The the, uh, the difference is, is are can we handle a tough defensive front? Can we score against a team that's going to apply a lot of pressure? And we haven't done that yet, and I want to see if we are able to do that. That's why I'm more interested in that Tennessee and the Steelers and the Ravens game because they're going to play the kind of defense where that we're going to have to go through if we want to get to where we want to go. So I want to know, can we still put up 20 on a Tennessee? Or are we going to get shellacked, you know, 28 to 6? I think we're playing the Eagles have a better defense than Tennessee by a, yeah, a lot. I agree. By a lot, man. I think that. Well, they've given I up think 27, see, 37, 25, 38, and 30. I'm telling you. I, but how much does that have to deal with Carson Wentz getting fumbling <laughs> at his own 20-yard line? Yeah. I have well, never I mean, seen anybody take a sack like Carson Wentz does. He takes a <laughs> sack as if he had no idea there was anybody <laughs> yeah. else on the field. <laughs> He's like, whoa, my God, where did that guy come from? Who were they playing? Uh, it was it two weeks ago where he like broke out to the right, and the Dallas. guy— the dude just steamrolled him. It was twice. like he didn't even see the guy. I saw it happen twice in that Dallas oh, game man. where he, he just stand there and all of a sudden, like, he's getting hit from the front, too. Like, did you not see the guy? Oh, hey, he's huge. Insane. If you look back <laughs> at the Eagles, you know, they only lost to Baltimore by two. Raven or Steelers only beat them by nine. They kind of made a late comeback in that one. Uh, the Cincinnati game that they tied um, was bad. They beat the 49ers, beat the Giants, beat the Cowboys. You know, handedly, this past week or their in their last game, so it'll be interesting. I think they win. I think they win again this week, so they're going to be coming in at four, four, and one. Uh, if the Cowboys would have started Garrett Gilbert against the Eagles, the Cowboys would have won. That game. <laughs> ben DiNucci, the, that quarterback was so bad. Their offense could do absolutely. I'm, if they start Garrett Gilbert, they beat the Cowboys that game. I'm I calling love, it right now. I love the fact that Ben DiNucci was out there throwing sidearm passes, <laughs> yeah. like, trying to look super cool. <laughs> That's yeah, the only game work. he's ever going to play in his career. Yeah. It was I so mean, bad. I don't know. Maybe not. I mean, the way things are going in Dallas, you know. He's, they're not, they're not they're trotting a, him back out there. A, there are a couple injuries. Gilbert away looks from, way better. Uh, <laughs> Gilbert looked Dude, way better. Put it this way. Put it this way. They went out and brought on, brought in two other Cooper, guys. Cooper yeah. Rush and Garrett Gilbert yeah. knowing that Andy Garrett Dalton's Gilbert coming looked, back. Look, Garrett Gilbert looked good against the Steelers. Yeah, he the did. Cowboys' he's, defense has turned around. They've gotten some guys back. Um, They're benching him already, though. They're saying it's back to back to Dalton, man, for this week. Yeah, I don't agree with that because Dalton didn't show me anything in, before he got hurt and got <laughs> killed, killed by the yeah. football team. Garrett Gilbert was dicing up good. the Steelers a little bit. Yeah, and there were some calls in that game that yes. went the Steelers' way. Yes, they did. But, you know, I'm not saying that they would have changed the outcome of the game. One that kind of some people are forgetting about is when they were marching down the field, there was definitely a horse collar sack that Garrett Gilbert got dragged down by his nameplate, and they didn't call it, and it made it like fourth and fifteen, which I think they ended up maybe I think they might have picked up the first down somehow, but uh, they definitely benefited from some calls in that game. But I think that Philly comes in at I think Philly beats uh, the Giants this week. Spoiler alert for my pick. <laughs> I also so, agree with that. Four, four, and one, first in the NFC East, looking like they're going to host a playoff game. <laughs> oh my! How, God. how, <laughs> yeah. sickening is five it gonna and three, be and we might not even if make the it. Browns yeah. go ten and six and don't make the playoffs, and the Eagles make it at six seven, and ten, nine, six and ten. Yeah, I, there's so many people out there that are like, I think it'd be super funny if the Eagles only win two more games, they win the division at five, ten, and one. And host a playoff game against not okay. You're gonna play what? They'd be the four, so they'll play the five seed, and they pull off a win yeah, at home. That's the somebody. story that yeah. it would be. That their defense in a cold weather game at home, Liberty they win Field, a t yeah. they win a tight game over. If we go to the uh, standings right now in the playoffs, the five seed would be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, yeah. So okay, so I'm but, not sold on the Buccaneers right now. But in that game, in a low-scoring Tampa Bay, really can't run the ball. They're forced to now, pass. Tom Brady in the playoffs. You know, yeah. tell, him, tell him, Josh. I'm just, I'm know. just telling you. I've Free seen Tampa him, Bay. Tampa Bay, obviously, you know, has, has you know, what are they five and three now? They're only one game in the playoffs. Right but now. I watched them be. I mean, they were god awful against the Saints. Yeah, it wasn't, and they were bad against them in Week One. And we all said, "Oh, it was Week One," but. They were 
bad against the Giants. The they thing, were the they were a the blown Saints call game, away from losing to the Giants. Right, but the Saints game was just a what we talked about our fears with some of these Browns games too. Like they made a couple of mistakes early, and the Saints just came out. They, there was blood in the water, and they attacked, and it was score, 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 and all of a sudden it's like. Well, we are completely one-dimensional. They yeah. don't have a very good running game to begin with nope. half the time. Why don't they just go to Fournette? Yeah, the, Ronald they need Jones. To give, they need to give Fournette the ball. and That's Arian's MO. They man. have, they're have. they almost in that uh, state of mind as a team. That Do they have too many big-name guys on the outside? I, did I not say this coming in? I said they remind me of last year's Browns team. All this hype about how good they look on paper – they got a gel, and they're not like gelling Antonio well. Like Antonio Brown just joined the team, yeah. And Scotty Miller was little. Scotty Miller was playing really well, and they just threw, little, they threw Antonio Brown in. Little breaking news: uh, Shane Bieber unanimously wins AL Cy Young. All right, yep. nice. I saw that. I Indians also had a couple Gold Glove winners, so it's exciting. Next stop: World Series. Yeah, right, right after again, we trade. Right. right after we trade Francisco. Yeah, Lindor. he'll be gone yeah. before opening day. Hey, you sell the team. Fans? Sell the team, please. Yeah, the Dolans, right? Yeah. Please sell the team. Yeah, Francisco will, I would say, 95% chance he will be gone before I opening agree. I agree. day. Uh, so, that's sad. Yeah. All right, now that we brought everybody down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, Cy, Cy Young winner. Wah, wah. Hey. <laughs> Trainer best player. But, no. So, you know, we'll kind of move forward here a little bit. We kind of previewed, you know, what we think some of the bigger games are for the second half of the season. Um, we'll get into our picks for this game, you know, when we do the game picks. But, Basically, coming into the second half of the season, we want to see the defense improve. We want to see – got to see what we have in Baker these next eight games. Uh, we want to see us be able to get back to the run game, hopefully Teller and Chubb are back this week. And uh, let's just win the games that we should win and then maybe try to steal one. You know, let's try to steal one against Tennessee. Let's look competitive against the Steelers and the Ravens. And, you know, let's clinch a playoff spot for the first time in, you know, what – uh, it's 15 eight, years. 18 years, 18, 18, 18 years, years, longest drought in the NFL. So, you know, let's go do It's right there. It's right there for us. First time, you know, in basically my life that coming out of the bye halfway through the season, the Browns are going to be playing meaningful November football. So with a winning record, with a winning record, <laughs> they're always meaningful. It's just yeah. that, that doesn't mean that we're doing well. <laughs> right. Sometimes they're meaningful. Every one lose, of those so 0 16 games were meaningful for me until uh, Corey Coleman dropped that last oh, pass oh, yeah. off Don't his face mask. Us. Yes. Looks so. like he was out there last, or against the Raiders. Yeah. <laughs> but Okay, so we're wrapping up our picks from last week. Yeah, let's, go. Yeah, let's, let's go. move into our it. game picks here. So where Justin was wrong. <laughs> yeah, so Thursday. guys, I'm trying real hard to, uh, to make some crazy picks here. I was just ruining my chances of winning this thing. You know? uh, so our records after from week nine, uh, I led the way at 10 and four. Well done. Uh, Josh and Blake at nine and five. Justin... Uh, seven and seven. So some of the key games where we kind of separated a little bit this week. Uh, Justin unfortunately picked San Fran on Thursday night. Yeah, I was stupid. Um, <laughs> however, he was a winner in the Atlanta Denver game, but he also picked Chicago to beat Tennessee. Uh, I picked the Giants right. Everybody else picked Washington. Blake was the only one to pick the Raiders, and Josh riding Tua. Miami Dolphins in a shootout. Uh, we all took Arizona other than Josh. Um, pretty much everything else was uh, equal. I'm done picking the, the Cardinals. Every time I pick the Cardinals. Yeah, well, go ahead. Don't pick them this week. <laughs> they so, lose. Because I might pick them this week. So who are they playing? <laughs> oh, oh, the Bills. boy. That's a tough one there. <laughs> Bills coming off a big win. So, okay. So, after uh, nine weeks, Josh, you're still in first place, 94-39 and 39 record. Really impressive. Yes. Uh, myself, I've co- climbed my way up the second, 91 and 42, three games back. All right. Blake sit, sits six games back at 88 and 45. Justin, you sit nine games back at 85 and okay. 48. It's Let's just not take a bad. moment, though, that like we're pretty good at picking these games. Yeah. We yeah, know what we're impressive. talking about. You know, so if you're looking for NFL news, you tuned into the right spot. Just don't let's don't don't trust me because I'm seven and seven. I'm gonna be, and I'm also gonna take some wily picks this week. I'm gonna keep it sexy out here, and just be a little crazy, you know. Hey. All right, Justin. So we'll have you uh, oh, kick God, off okay. Thursday night. Big game here: yes. Indianapolis Colts yeah. at Tennessee. Big game for the division. You know, I'll tell you what, Philip Rivers and all the Colts fans out there, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the Titans. I, you know, hopefully, they're still trolling us out there on YouTube. Uh, the Colts suck. 
No Tennessee. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Couldn't, be, couldn't beat Baltimore yeah, this week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they got hosed, by the way, on – there's no way Marcus Peters intercepted that ball. No way. That, there's no I, way that's an intercept. That if was that's one of a the, wide receiver coming down with that catch, there's nobody in the, the right mind saying that's a catch. Yeah, never. That was one of I the worst Dez, calls I've I ever seen. I saw Des Bryant in a playoff game take three steps, dive for the end zone, and the, yeah. the ball hit the ground and come out, and they said, oh, you didn't control it through the ground. They yeah. were like, that third step constitutes a football move. I'm like, hey, guys, while he's taking that third step, the ball's juggling. and it, That was one of the worst calls I've ever seen in my life. Um, but I'm going to take the Titans because I also think the Colts suck. Oh, hey. That's two. Uh, I am – let me get back up here. So – this is a tough game. Indianapolis really turning around. Um, but I'm taking Tennessee at home. Okay. Give me Tennessee. Yep, everybody stay in the same there cuz Indy, we don't like you. Yeah. I think the Colts are good. they're they're in a little turmoil with that running game. I don't think they really know what they're doing right now. Uh no, it looked like Taylor. Jonathan Taylor was the guy and they yeah. were like giving him the ball, feeding yeah. him, you know, a bunch of carries and then now they don't now it's like a committee. Well, he, he fumbled early on and that was it. It's yeah. like, oh, I don't think they trust him. You know, I mean, he's a rookie, so. Right. Yeah, but, but even early in the season, he was getting a ton of carries, but not that His yards per carry Yeah, was, it wasn't good. Yeah, yeah, it was like under four or something. Which well, is crazy because their offensive line is like tops of the league. Yes. You know? Yeah, and they got Phillip Rivers at quarterback. I mean, oh, he's so loaded. good. They're they, loaded on offense. So T.Y. Hilton is back this week. <laughs> <laughs> when I say he's so good, I mean, I'm completely. That's <laughs> garbage. Jack he's Doyle, trash. Jack Doyle at tight end. Mo Alley Cox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A basketball player. It's it's honestly like if you look at Indianapolis, it's kind of sad. Like, I'm, yeah, it's yeah. gonna be sad also because they probably will make the playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they might <both, laughs> yeah. win the division if they win this week. Just I will. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. Uh, okay, so that takes us into Sunday's games: Tampa Bay versus Carolina. Carolina almost took down the Chiefs this week. Mm-hmm. Give Tom, me Tampa Bay. Tampa yeah, Bay coming off of that performance last week. The, Watch out. They're going to come out. And- <laughs> know how we said, well, New England doesn't lose two weeks in a row. Well, maybe it was Tom Brady doesn't lose two weeks in a row. Because New England does lose two <laughs> weeks in a row. Uh, <laughs> yes, they do. Be- I actually was inclined to maybe take Carolina here. But, but CMC, your boy, your boy's out CMC again. CMC yeah. might be out again. Mike Davis coming so, back. Yep. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Tampa Bay. If yeah. CMC was playing, though, I legit was thinking about taking Carolina. He looked great. He gives them a whole nother just level of awesome. Yep. It gives my fantasy yep. team a whole nother level of Yeah, awesome. you actually won this week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> a second point, second highest scoring team. Yeah, you got lucky this week. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a guy put up a zero. Matt Stafford got hurt. You got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Justin, what you got? Yeah, I got to take Tampa Bay. I just, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take for better things. I'm they take, lose this game, though. I'm selling. I'm, I'm taking Tampa Bay oh. as well. I think that another week with Antonio Brown, I think that he has a decent game this week. Yep. I think that um, kind of hurt him, too. I think they were trying to, like, all right, let's make it, this a Antonio Brown kind of night. Yep, let's see yep. what he can do. And then it was, ah, oh, I think man. the fact that Chris Godwin has pins in his fingers, too, right now, <laughs> it probably doesn't help their chances of him catching the ball. Or so. the fact that they tend not to throw the ball to Mike Evans until, like, they're the way the down yeah. in the well, second half. Or it's, like, first and goal at the one. Now, did yeah. you see Mike Evans, though, like, his history in the last, like, two or three years against Marshawn Lattimore and the Saints? It's yeah. bad. It's, All beca- it's not bad. It is absolutely nothing. It's, like it's because of one thing. Yeah. Marshawn Lattimore, there's one guy, and there's one game he gets up for every year, and it goes back to a couple years ago where – he, him and Jameis, Lattimore and Jameis were getting into it on the sideline. Mike Evans came up from behind and just ran him over from behind <laughs> and destroyed him. And ever since then, Marshawn Lattimore against Mike Evans. He's like, I'm locking him down. Not even game. close. Not even close. Um, okay, so football team at Detroit. Mm. Football team at Detroit. Anybody? Stafford playing? Stafford is playing, I believe. I believe Stafford is playing. Stafford's playing, and it'll be Alex Smith. Galladay is not playing. Doesn't look like. Give me the football team. You're taking the uh, the WFTs. The Detroit Detroit just lets me down a lot. And yeah, Alex Smith. You know, he looked good this week. Mm. You know what? I'll take the 
re- the football team as well. <laughs> oh, cool. I'm definitely not taking them. I'm definitely taking Detroit. So um, we just we're gonna. I'm taking Detroit as well. I'm with you, cool. Justin. Thanks, Washington. Man. I'm Good going. Win. Thank you. Uh, just, uh, I think this is a DeAndre Swift breakout game. I I've been Swift saying that for a while. Against that D? <laughs> they don't yeah. know how to I use it. I think he's him. breaking against up the only good thing that Washington has their defensive front. This is where I Washington think, wins, and maybe they take over that division. Mm. It's not out of well, the realm. Yeah, man. you win There's a couple a games, and then when Alex Smith really gets get hurt for the playoffs, they can trot Dwayne Haskins out there. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh boy! So. Uh, so okay, next game. Uh, this team's got to go on kind of a run to make the playoffs. Jacksonville at Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a good game to start on, <laughs> <laughs> Green Bay. Yeah, I'm taking Green, Green Bay. Bay. Yeah, yeah, um, I'll take Green Bay. Green Bay after their loss to um, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, best game they've played all year. See, Worst and then game, there's Green one Bay. where Green Bay looked Green like Bay, Tampa Bay did. Green Bay turned around. They've played lights out since. Uh, Philly at the Giants. Big game here. Everybody um, hates uh, the I'm Eagles. Taking, God. I'm taking Philly. Yeah, everybody hates the Eagles. I hate this division so much. Give me the Eagles. I'm taking Philly. Even though I picked the Giants to win last week, they came through. I'm taking Carson Wentz. I'm taking. Give the me Daniel Jones. Daniel no Jones. No nickname for him until he wins this game. But Danny yeah. pick six Jones. I'm going Giants also. Wow. Okay, we're split here. I just watched the Eagles barely beat the division. Worst Cowboys division team games I've ever are a little different, right? Because it's it's yeah. not always who who really it sucks and who doesn't suck as bad. It's they're, they're always tough. Division games mm-hmm. are always interesting. Yep. Like I said, the Eagles were awful against the Cowboys. And the Cowboys had a high school kid playing quarterback. <laughs> Carson Wentz looked awful in that game. He's looked awful all year. All right. Well, we, we'll see. We split on that one. Okay, this game here. Do the Chargers find a way to win? Or does Tua pick up another win in his rookie campaign? What are you doing, Josh? I have a feeling Dude, this is going to be a fun game. Yeah, these absolutely. rookie quarterbacks. Yeah. yeah, you like both of these teams. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Man. Give me the five and three Dolphins. That defense is very good. It's very they good. are defense they are in, uh, scoring. And I I think you know, and I say five and three Dolphins because I think even for myself, I think of the Dolphins still, and I'm like, oh, they're probably three and five. <laughs> right? No, they haven't no, been this good since they had Ricky Williams running the ball for <laughs> yeah. them. Smoking Ricky. Uh, I'm gonna go the Dolphins. By the way, I think I called it last week. I said I picked the Raiders, but I said the Chargers were gonna be up until the end, and then they'd find a way to lose it. I'm pretty sure if we go back in the the, the records, the archives, we'd see that I said check that. the tape. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Justin, what do you got here? I like the Chargers a lot, and I'm just gonna I keep picking them, and they keep kind of figuring out a way to drop the game, and I'm gonna keep <laughs> picking them. I I like the Chargers. Justin Herbert, it just he's fun to watch. He man. looks good. He's, he's super really fun really fun. And I talked he looks a lot good, of crap and he's about playing him. well. Yeah, <laughs> wow, uh, yeah. he's playing well. <laughs> I uh, I'm picking Miami to uh, you know he impressed me this week. Um, the other thing keeping me from picking the Chargers is I'm still waiting on Austin Eckler to come back because I think once he comes back, I mean we kind of forget they're playing without one of the elite yeah. pass catching running backs. You guys going to give me a little gas money jumping on my Dolphins bandwagon? I'm yeah, not. I'm not. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. nope. I'm taking the Chargers. That that uh that stops today. That means you're probably going to be right this week. I hope so. Uh okay, big game here, Buffalo at Arizona. Two teams playoff hopes for Arizona. Kyler Murray, a lot of people out there in the, right now saying, "Who would you take? Would you take Kyler Murray or Lamar Jackson if you were starting your franchise?" Kyler Murray. You were the starting dude can throw the ball, today. and he's accurate. Yep, that's a tough question. I don't know. I, I, I I'm with Josh. I'm taking. I didn't I'm think it was a tough question at all. Yeah, I, I didn't think, think so either. Yeah, I think I, the league's figuring slowly figuring out Lamar Jackson. Yeah, he can't throw. Just make him throw. <laughs> Stop their run game. See what happens. Yep. So I'm going to take Arizona at home. Taking the Bills. Because every time I pick the Cardinals, yeah. they, they lose. I pick the Cardinals, and they lose yeah. all the time. And, I, uh, man, I want to pick the Cardinals, but, I yeah, I'm going to take the Bills. I like me some Buda Baker. I don't like picking the Bills either. And I, Every time I pick the Bills, <laughs> they lose, so I don't know. I'm taking the Bills. Chalk this one up for a loss. Yeah, no matter it's what. a loss either way. <laughs> Give me Arizona. I'll do it. I'll take the Cardinals. All right, so two Buffalo, two Arizonas. Denver at Las Vegas. I feel like this one's easier. Give me the Raiders. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Raiders. I'm going to take the Raiders as well. 
uh, Drew Locke, some people saying, you know, he looks like, you know, he's kind of turned a corner. He only does it in the fourth quarter when the teams are playing prevent defense against him. I was looking at some of those stats, though. It was kind of like what the Raiders did to us. In the first half of that Broncos game, they had the ball like twice. Yeah. So people were giving Drew Locke crap for not lighting it up in the first half. He, he was never on the field in the first right. half. I had Jerry Judy, so I was happy. Uh, Cincinnati, yeah, Cincinnati, Joe Burrow taking on Big Ben with two bum knees. And, and, uh, and COVID. COVID. And COVID. Uh, Did he have COVID or he was he just was a just close, close contest? Yeah, contest. he was close. It which, looks you know, like he's playing. Because yeah, be if he wasn't playing and it was Mason Rudolph against Joe Burrow, it'd be, probably, a yeah. it'd be a different game. Yeah. be a different game. But I'm taking Pittsburgh Me at too. home. Steelers. Yeah. Yep. It's just going to be really tough for the Bengals to hand this. It's a division game, but I'm still going to take the Steelers. Yeah. All right. Uh, San Fran at... New Orleans. Saints. Saints. Yeah. San Fran's just too beat up. They're done. They're, yeah. they're, they've been so decimated. Might get Mostert back this week. Nope. nope. No, they I just rolled him out. They, yeah, they just yep. rolled him out. They, why, wouldn't they, why wouldn't they let him play? <laughs> I'm back to starting Rex Burkhead this week, it looks hey, like. Hey, uh, I, yeah. I started Rex Burkhead this week. He almost made me a comeback on Monday night. Uh, and Damian Harris, questionable with the chest injury. Rex, true. He might be the starter this week. Well, we can only hope. Yep. Ooh, he'll get the starting he'll get, running he'll back get, for the New England he'll Patriots. He'll get seven yeah. carries for Him 30 and the other five guys. I'm hoping he has 10 catches. There you go. Uh, so that takes us to Seattle at the Rams. Another big game. This will be a game. fun game, I'm thinking. Should be a fun game to watch. Two yeah. high scoring teams. One obviously has a better front with Aaron Donald, but Seattle's defense really sucks. They're yeah, like, I what, they're the. Worst, one of the worst in the league. I think Dallas giving up is, the most points. Uh, yeah, I don't. Or yards Dallas or is turning it around right now. So I, I'll take I'll take Seattle in this game though. Yeah. Yes. I'm Russell Wilson. Just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take the Rams. Wow. Oh, wow. Trying to make okay. up a game or what? Just, I think that confident. defense <laughs> is really really bad, and you can only ask Russell to be Superman so often. And the other team has Aaron Donald. So if you're asking Russell to single handedly win you this game. He's going to be running away from Aaron Donald a lot. Jared Goff hasn't looked that good this year, though. Yeah, but everybody looks good against That's And that's true. Seattle. Yep. Yeah, so I'm going to take Seattle as well. So, Blake, you're by yourself there. Um, I've already filled us all in for the Sunday night game. Uh, Baltimore at New England. So <laughs> everybody's taking Baltimore, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, so we yep. don't have to... Wait, wait. To... New England has Cam Newton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. Wow. Uh, Jacoby Myers, though, a lot you of look, targets. Yeah. A lot of times nobody else to throw the ball to. Exactly. Right. Yep. I I was listening to uh, Sirius Radio on the way to work, and they're like, "Remember when New England like do they have any tight ends?" And I'm like, "Yeah." I was thinking about they're all like, hurt. Izzo. That's their yeah. t- that's their tight end. Yeah. You never. I mean, normally they have a tight end that's. It's it's really relevant. really really it's bad. Crazy. They're New like England? the team that started two three tight end sets. Yep. Yeah. And they Man, somebody played. ruined one of them ruined that. Well, it's really, really bad right now. And just can you imagine how bad it would be if Jarrett Siddham was at quarterback? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, on right. to the Monday night game. <laughs> well, let me real quick, real quick. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. He's going to pull out his stats. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I just want to remind everybody that the Patriots are three and five, so mm-hmm. eight games, and I'm pretty sure they still have three passing touchdowns on the season. <laughs> That's yeah. on the crazy. season. Yes, yeah. It's crazy. Holy it crazy. crap. Um, by the way, Josh McDaniels, you should have taken a job because right now <laughs> yeah. nobody's you shouldn't have nobody's been making coming. demands. Well, here's the, the thing. Compound. So how good was Tom Brady? I mean, offensively, this is like the team he's playing weapons. with last year. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So Tom, Br- no wonder he wanted to get out. I mean, we've been saying it for a while. Like they don't have any weapons, and you know it's just kind of plug and play. But eventually, at some point, you got to have good football players, and they just don't really yeah. have any good football players. And that's yeah. why I think Tampa Bay's got a good shot at going this year because they've got eight more games in the regular season to tune it up and yeah, get it right. Just, for them, they're a team that they just got to get in the playoffs. It doesn't matter yeah, if they're right. playing the one seed. Yeah. <laughs> They just gotta they got to make sure they, they get got, in. They got they get guys in everywhere. I wouldn't on be, both sides I wouldn't be scared of anybody I was playing. No. Um, okay, Monday night, Vikings, Kirk Cousins against Nick Foles and the Bears. Uh, Give me uh, Dalvin cooking it up, Joe. <laughs> Dalvin, he's cook. He's yeah. just cook all day, cooking. The chef? The chef, yeah. This is cooking the in the of, kitchen. This is the kind of game, though, where like at halftime, Kirk Cousins will be 
one of four <laughs> passing for, for eight Clyde yards. Clyde Cook might have and 150 and yards. And two touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good – the Bears' defense is good. It's just, man. It's really good. Every their time. run defense is susceptible. They I'm, can yeah, be I'm taking Vikings. Vikings? I'm, I'm going to go the Vikings because as good as the Bears' defense is, their offense is – they need to go back to Trubisky. I didn't uh, think I'd ever say this. They need to go back to Trubisky. You're right. Trubisky could run the football. And the guy's record as a starting quarterback is not bad. And they were, what, 4-1 and one or 3-1 and one with him to start the year. And then he was only down by a couple of touchdowns in that Atlanta game, which Atlanta kind of turning a corner that they've kind of turned their ship around a little bit. Uh, I'm taking Chicago, though, in this game. I'm going to take Chicago. I, just, I don't love my pick. I'm... I, I'm on the, uh, I'm on the I think this is a I don't think this is a high scoring game. I think this is uh I don't know, ugly. I think this is ugly. I th- An ugly game favors Chicago. They're not the pretty team. Give me the Vikings because I think the Foles magic is wearing off. There's their record is starting to correct itself. What were they? Five and one, five yeah. and two. Now they're five and four. Kind of closer to where we think they should be. Yeah. So they're gonna finish six and ten. <laughs> and this is the next step onto that, so Foles, right. is, Foles is awesome if he's backing up a team. In or the playing Tom Brady. Yeah. Right. Those That's are the it. times. That's it. Which I I told some people earlier in this year, Ian Murphy, if you're listening, you said that Nick, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you, you liked Nick Foles. Uh, but, Didn't he uh, say put some respect on his name, man? Yeah. But no, then I, in I his don't. defense the very next week, he, he went he, out he beat he Tom Brady. beat Tom Brady again. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I said. That's it. It's Tom Brady, or he's a backup coming in in the fourth quarter and can salvage game. All right, so we'll circle back up. Uh, yeah. Houston at Cleveland. Uh, who wants to go first this week? I've been kind of bad luck going first the last I'll go. Times, Give so. me the Browns, baby. Off the bye, I think we got this one. What's, what's the score? Yeah, well, you got, you got a score. score. You got oh, a score yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. I had a bye week, it's and nice I forgot what we go, did. Yeah, it's nice to go back and see, you know, how close we were. So, honestly, I think it would, it's going to be something along the lines of, like, 38-35. I was Ooh. just going to say that. <laughs> Stole I it. I swear I was going to say that. <laughs> well, you can agree with me. I'm going to go the Browns also, and I'm going to say 37-34. <laughs> 37 34. Yeah, so, I hey, guess I'm assuming before, we're making all of our kicks. Yeah. Before Justin uh, – Throws in his pick. Just got another alert. Former Cleveland Indian baseball player Trevor Bauer, NL Cy Young Award. Nice. Imagine if we didn't get rid of him for yeah. no reason. Yeah. Right. So I just threw, wanted to throw, throw a ball there. into the outfield. <laughs> Not outfield, <laughs> in the outfield seven, stands. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, you're going to be at the game. Yes. Okay. Are you are you cheering us on to a win? Yes. Or are you Always not, cheering are us you on to a win. Are you selling your season tickets after the game so, because you can't attend anymore? Uh, I don't have season tickets. I am uh, know somebody that has season tickets. I'm on the season tickets watch list, okay. uh, waiting okay. list right now. So I'm waiting to get my season tickets. Um, if they lose this game, some might come available. I hope so because I'm trying <laughs> to move up a little bit on that list. Um, but so I'm going to take the Browns. And I am going to take the Browns 28-24. Nick Chubb runs for 140 yards and two touchdowns. Wow. Big game. Big game. For, for Chubb. Crazy Nick Chubb stat. He still leads the league in uh, carries of 20-plus yards, even though he's missed the last four games. He's big time. He still leads he's the league in those. It was 20 or 10. One, one of two. He leads the league in them. Hey, he's good. Write he that. Write good. that check. <laughs> Just get that man in Cleveland uh, in a Cleveland uniform for yeah. the rest of his career, please. So that all of them? No, I got to go. I'm going to yep. pick the Browns. Uh, I think this comes down to a last possession type game. Uh-oh. Um, I'm going to take the Browns, winning this on a late game field goal, 28-27. Um, I think it's one of the games that's going to come down to the wire. I don't see either team unless they do it early pulling away and stretching this game out uh, for, like, a multiple touchdown win. I just um, – I don't see it happen. defenses are too bad. Yes. I, I think that it's a tight one. Hopefully we're all right and we come in at 6-3. and three. That'd be nice. Absolutely. Man. That'd be crazy. I would really love that. Well, uh, hey, thanks for checking out another live episode of The Dogs. Uh, remember to subscribe on YouTube. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, make sure to check back next week. Hear our thoughts on the Texans game. Catch our preview of the Eagles game. Um, you know, Hopefully you guys got a good look at what we're expecting to see for the rest of the season. Uh, drop in the comments if there's something else you want to hear about next week. Um, you know, buckle up, everybody. Browns are about to play meaningful football in November. First time in 
you know, my life basically, or at least the life that I remember. Um, so enjoy it while we can. We're about to play meaningful November football. Uh, go Browns, and we'll see you guys all next week. <laughs>